Welcome to the Zesty Ginger Podcast. We are Megan and Dr. Alex. We are here for transformation, yours, ours, and the collective, personal and professional for practitioners, but not just any transformation, compassionate transformation. Because between the two of us, we have seemed to have done things the painful way. Let our pitfalls become your stepping stones. We aren't afraid to share our raw and vulnerable truths in order to help you transform your thinking, your body, your heart, and your soul. Combining 15 years of functional medicine with brain-based habit change to lead you to the best life possible in a compassionate way. Compassion, yes, yet plan to roll up your sleeves. Transformation requires your participation. And a quick reminder, this information is not meant to diagnose, manage, or treat disease. Always consult with your doctor, not this doctor, before making changes. Now let's get into the episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the Zesty Podcast. So happy to have you here. So happy to have you back. If you are a new listener, welcome. If you've been around for a long time, thanks for coming. And I, this is Megan here today, and I have a special guest with me, Krista. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. And Krista and I today are going to talk about transformation. We're going to talk about what it takes to make transformation happen in your life, what it takes to get you there and how we end up in a place where we know that we're ready for more. So I said to Krista, I said, I would love to talk about your journey because it has been so, so fun to watch her from when we first met and all the way to now, and even just back to January. So in January, we held a two-day compassionate habit event in Virginia beach. Lots of you were there. So thank you for coming. And this was such, uh, it was our first time doing this live two day event. Absolutely enjoy, love, love, love our live events. And it was so, so cool. And we've decided we're going to do it again. We're going to do it in August in Dallas. Another two days are going to be two full days this time. And so I wanted to discuss with Krista, because she's someone who came into that event, one person, and then not that many months later, a very different person. I wanted to just find out what was going on, why she came to this and just how she has been able to implement and transform so quickly, because I know that that's what a lot of our listeners want. They want to transform fast. And it's great to hear stories from me and from Dr. Alex. And I almost get the most out of hearing the stories shared by other people, people who are really like me. So Krista, let's walk me back to a little bit what was going on Uh, that had you interested in first place of coming to the two-day habit event in January? Yes. So I think that I um, learned about the in-person event in probably six weeks before it happened. So that would be early December, 2022. Um, And I discovered it through your podcast. Um, You hosted a 20-day, I think it was called a series of possibility um, podcast. It was fantastic. It really walked you through um, really assessing where you are in your life and where you might want to go. And that just aligned really nicely with where I was in December, 2022. I knew I wanted, um, 2023 to be a year of action. I was motivated for change. I was looking for something different. And I also realized that if I wanted change, I had to do something different because what I had been doing up to now, wasn't going to get me to the next level. And so, Um, at that time I was really focused on my health. Um, I was doing a lot of things that we traditionally think of as supporting our health. I had like addressed my diet. I was moving my body. I was resting. I was drinking water. I was, um, doing everything that I could think of, but I had reached a plateau. And so I knew I was searching for something different. Um, and then there were a few reasons why I was drawn to an in-person event. The first was that I wanted to keep the momentum of the podcast going. Like there was such great information there and realizations of these really small things that you, small habits that you could add to your life to start seeing shifts. Um, I had worked with you and Dr. Alex pre-pandemic. And so I looked forward to seeing you in person at the event. It was just, um, seemed like a, a really nice opportunity. And then there was something that I just couldn't put my 
couldn't put my finger on. Like, I didn't know why I wanted to go. I just knew I wanted to go. And I just knew that was the right place to be. Uh, and it's an affordable price point. Um, and so that was really attractive to um, I have done in-person events before, both professionally and for personal development. And I'm, I know there's always this great energy that you take away from the event. And so that was sort of the, the big driving force of why I wanted to uh, come to this event. Awesome. So then was, were you focused on career at all coming into this event or was it just mostly health? Not at all. I, um, I had just made a decision to leave a career. Um, it was very difficult. And I, uh, I, I just assumed that this was going to be a personal journey. Like I had no plans to start finding something else. This was just focusing on my own personal life. Okay. Okay. So here you are, you come to Virginia beach and you came by yourself. Came by myself. Okay. So tell me, walk me through that. How did that feel? You're walking in, in by yourself and what are you thinking? So it was a little intimidating. I'm coming in with all these worries of, am I in the right place? Uh, what if I'm the oldest person in the room? Uh, I'm here alone. I'm always so awkward in group environments. Like what's going on? What am I going to run into? And in hindsight, really what I was, what I was worried about is how will I connect to this room full of strangers? Um, and in hindsight, that was something I didn't have to worry about at all because this event attracts people who are looking for massive transformation. And that was the connection. Like we all had this connection. I just remember being in the room and meeting people and you're just standing in front of someone thinking, oh my gosh, this is the most amazing person I've ever met. And then just feeling so self-conscious. And it felt like every time I talked to something, someone, my introduction would go something like, hi, I'm Krista. I don't know who I am or what I'm doing with my life, but here I am. Like it was just, it was, it was very vulnerable. And there was beauty in that vulnerability because there were two um, typical reactions to that kind of a statement. And the first was, oh, you know, I said I was a teacher, but really I'm not happy being a teacher and I want to make some changes and I don't know how to make that change, but let's figure this out together. And the other group of people were saying, you're in the right place. I was exactly where you were six months ago. Here's the journey I took. I'm so excited to see what's coming your way. Just trust the process and you're going to be like transformed and it's going to be beautiful to watch. There was such good energy in that room. I remember thinking that it would take us a little bit of like pulling to get people to like start interacting. And it was immediate right off the bat. People were raising their hands. They were yelling stuff out. They were interacting. So that was such a cool energy to bring together in that, in that live space with the community, because you never, you just, we didn't quite know who would show up and how it was. So I felt that very welcoming energy too. It was, it was super cool. Tell me a little bit about what were the most impactful things that stuck out to you? Like, what did you take away from that and what have you implemented? Yes. So it was a lot of emotional processing tools, which is frankly, not what I was expecting when I showed up, but it's what I needed. And I had noticed in my life that small things were causing a big reaction to me. You know, you go into the laundry room and you realize that someone had put your not quite dry clothes in a laundry basket and they'd been sitting there for two days and it just made me so angry. And I also knew that wasn't a normal response. Like life events were causing a much bigger response in my body than I thought um, was appropriate. And what I've discovered through um, working with you is that in December, 2022, and really probably for the year or two before that, I was in a point of overfunctioning. And that can sound like a really good word in American society, but it isn't at all. Um, it meant that I was doing things that I shouldn't be doing. I was not relying on the support I had around me. Um, I was trying to do everything instead of focusing on what I was really good at. I was in survival mode. And in order to keep that pace going, I was really stuffing a lot of my emotions down. And so there were a few tools that I took away from the event that have really shifted how I feel in my body. And the first is when you would talk about cause and effect. And without going into the details, it's essentially um, me taking responsibility for the choices I make in my life and realizing that um, the way things are is not the way they have to keep going. 
And the other one was when we talked about negative self-talk. And negative self-talk, I think I didn't realize I was doing it because it's not like I was telling myself bad things. But I noticed that uh, in the morning before I got out of bed, that, you know, that time when you're just in bed and you're feeling good and you don't really want to get up and start the day, um, I would have these movies running through my head. And these were movies that really emphasize me as the main character in isolation, feeling very lonely and feeling um, just very despondent. And it didn't matter that I had a house full of people around me. This is what my body was telling me. And I just felt like there was nothing I could do to stop it. Um, you know, through the training that you provided that weekend, I realized that my brain was addicted to the feeling I got when that movie was playing. And also there were healthier ways to feel and process those emotions. And so incredibly since that event, I haven't, I think I've had maybe one or two times when that movie starts playing, but when that happens, Dr. Alex's voice comes in my head and it shuts it down. So that was a huge takeaway. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So what do you, that's amazing that that movie it's turned off. So do you remember anything specific? Was there something that you were really in like an area of life you were really in effect about, or did that stand out in any specific area that you were focusing on? Like it's all, it's everybody else's fault, but mine. Well, it, and it wasn't all the time, but I think it was my whole life. Like, I think it was I had just been going, going, going for so long that I wasn't slowing down and really being present in my body and present for the people around me. So it wasn't necessarily there was one um, area of my life. I mean, it was probably some of my my career, um, but I had been on a sabbatical for a year, so it couldn't have been all of that. Um, I think it was just really it was time for a reboot of my entire system and um that was one of the ways that we started that. So Krista, if somebody else is like, oh gosh, I wake up with that movie and the self-talk running in my head, is there anything obvious that you say to yourself or do that they could benefit from hearing? Yes. I mean, I, I think of that. I don't remember what movie it is anymore when the man's like, I'm the captain now. And that's what I feel like. Like I'm in charge of my body. I'm in charge of my thoughts. Like I don't have to listen to this. I can just like shut it down and, and process my feelings in a different way. Oh, I love that. I'm the captain now I'm driving this bus. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what we love about these tools and everybody uses them a little bit different, which is why we love to have people share, right? Like what really stuck out for them? Because I know for me being super kinesthetic, I realized how much I jump into the movie. Like you said, like, if I think of something bad, it, I'm in it, like I'm in the movie and I'm having all the feelings. So having the tools to realize that that's what you do and that you're living out this, this movie. And like you said, addicted to that feeling, what do you think it was protecting you from or doing for you to keep having that feeling in that movie play? Well, it was keeping me in a life that my body and my mind knew. Um, it was it was keeping me it was keeping me safe because I was continuing down the path that I knew and that I knew how to function in that my family knew how to function in. Um, it was just keeping the status quo. Okay, so it was safe safe to stay. Yes. Okay. So I know that coming to these events that the community and meeting other people. I know for me, that's why I go to events. I just recently sent out a newsletter talking about the idea of collisions. There's a book called Culture Code. Have you ever heard of that, Krista? It's um, an interesting book about you know, building cultures and companies. And one of the concepts in one of the chapters is about collisions. And the idea of the founder of this specific company is like, interacting and colliding with other people as much as possible, right? So it's like, oh, you meet this person and this person meets this person and how that's all where all the magic happens is actually in the collisions. And he says, I talk about collisions hundreds of times a day because I want people to know that's how important it is like to, to prioritize it as a value. So when I heard that, I was like, yes, that's why I love these events, the collisions of, oh, there's this person, you meet them and you're, you're in rapport, you're meeting them feeling their energy, you're there. And then they're quickly, you're meeting someone else that they know and connecting and 
you never know who you're going to find. If it's going to be your stylist or it's going to be your next client, right? At this kind of event. So we are creating space for those collisions. That's why we're gathering all of our favorite people and people who want to be um, leaders, practitioners, coaches into a space. So tell me a little bit about how coming into that community has been for you. Yes, you explained it perfectly. It was like a collision of all these people I didn't know I needed in my life were suddenly there. And it's amazing to me that in a 48 hour event um, that there are at least five women that I met at the event that I talked to, if not daily, several times a week. Like it's just, it's just, wow, that, uh, that, that happened. Um, and there were a couple other bonuses, I think, that come from attending an in-person event. Um, one was that it allowed me to get away from, not from the people in my life, but from your normal weekend retreat routine. You're not, uh, you're not worrying about grocery shopping. You're not worrying about what you have to get done before the week. You are just focused on where you currently are and where you want to go. And that was such a gift that um, I didn't really appreciate was coming. And there was one other thing that I took away from the event that I also want to really highlight. And that was that the techniques and tools that you taught and that I learned and I took away from were um, things that I shared with my kids. I have two kids in high school and a daughter in college, and they are obviously handling a lot of stress as we enter finals week. And so to be able to walk them through some tools on how to manage stress and calm their body and really um, show up as their strongest, best selves for uh, these challenges that they have is powerful. And it's really exciting to know that they are getting those tools, you know, 30 years ahead of, of where I was. So they're open to it, Krista? Yes. Yes. I mean, they may think I'm a little weird, but they are definitely open to it. <laughs> That's really cool when I get my daughter and her friends to do some of the things and they're open to it. They're actually way more open than I would think. So it's, it's pretty cool to see. Yeah. So you it, said, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's been a really nice conversation starter um, and something that we can joke about and talk about in the family and see what works. And, and, and so it's been a great, great tool for us. Had you gotten away to do anything on your own in a long time? Like, was this the first time you had done something like this? No, that was part of the resistance I had in coming. Um, I think that we, I haven't talked about this with my husband, but I think that maybe he was sensing that I was a little unsettled on where I was. And so he had said, you know, why don't you, now that COVID's over, why don't you think about doing a girl's trip and mention some friends and what neither of us expected is that I would have three of those trips within like this four month period. And this event was falling in the middle. So, um, you know, you say there's always resistance in getting there. And certainly I had to overcome a lot of guilt and um, financial concerns like getting there. But uh, but it was fine. It was it was great. And um, this but this was different. Right. When you're with your girlfriends, you aren't really focusing on revamping your life. It was uh, this was the first time that I had just focused on, um, what I wanted for this next chapter in my life. Gone to something just for you. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Okay. So I know you had, uh, part of the event was the a goal setting experience that we offer. And I know that you said you had a big takeaway from that. Can you share a little bit about how that went for you? Yes. And so what I wanted to really share was that in my experience, the, tools and the subconscious reprogramming that we talk about works even when you're very skeptical. Um, you know, I come from a hard science background. I was an attorney for 25 years. Like I, my brain is like flex position. Let me pick this apart. And maybe you're, you know, maybe you're an engineer, maybe you're uh, a teacher, maybe you're in healthcare and you can re relate to um, having that really analytical mind. And so um, the goal setting exercise was really difficult for me. And that was something that I had trouble coming up with what my goal would be. Um, and I think it was because, frankly, I was getting tired of my health always being my goal. Like it felt so boring. I didn't like that as part of my identity as, as someone who's, you know, constantly trying new things without success. Um, and so I was feeling a lot of resistance, but, but you and Dr. Alex were like, just write something down, like tell the whole room, just write something down. And then once you said to write something down, you said something to the effect of, 
now that you have your goal down, I want you to dream even bigger and even bolder because these massive transformations are coming and you're not going to believe it and you just need to be prepared. So write something down. Don't overthink it. Whatever comes to your mind, just write it down. It's like, all right, I'm not going to overthink it. And what I wrote down was, am I a speaker? Should I be using my voice more? And that's all I wrote. And I closed my notebook and I didn't think about that again until um, I was preparing for our call and I realized, oh my gosh, I'm using my voice. I'm being a speaker. And like, I know this is just the first step in like a whole lineage of thing that's coming, but it was just, that was a really cool um, realization that I came to. Oh my gosh. I didn't know that. That's so cool. Chris. Okay. So this gets even better because not only are you now a coach and a speaker on this podcast, you also were quite the speaker at our seven day certification event. So fast forward to a few months later in April, we had our, we host a seven day certification training, which you all have probably heard about. And Krista came and joined us for that. And it was so cool because, you know, the beginning of that training, people are often really deep into their stuff, right? Like all this, all, all their unconscious mind resistance is coming out and they're trying to push against the process. It's just it's totally natural part of it. And this cool thing happens day four or five where people like lock in all the things that they've shifted and they just step into this new identity. And you can, we actually have people take pictures before the event and, and after because their physical face were changed. It's so cool. And so Krista comes in that morning, right? Day, I think we said day four or five. And she's like, I have something to share. And just like powerfully stood up, commanded the whole room, we were all just, we were all like laughing. We were all just enjoying this share so, so much. And you, I mean, you are an amazing, I said at the end of it, I was like, that was such an amazing story and you're such an amazing speaker. So that's even cooler now, Krista, to hear that that was what you wrote, it, what you wrote, because these things that people write in the events, I we always say that put something big because so many big things have come through that I was just like, yep, sure. I'll throw a lake house on there <laughs> and then magically you have it. So Please tell me, you know, the shifts that you have seen since that January event and just take us on that journey, Krista. Yeah, it was funny because before I went to the seven day training, I told my husband, okay, you know, I know it's going to be a long week. It's seven days where I'm gone and I don't know how much time we'll have to talk when I'm gone, but, um, you know, don't worry. I'm not taking any other steps until I have a coaching business. And so that is how I left and how I showed up. I'm like, I'm here to work on myself. I'm here to just like take whatever I can away from this training. Um, but what I've discovered that is that the, the shifting your mindset using subconscious reprogramming is the fastest way to see massive transformation in your life. And we saw that again and again. Um, and in the training, I was just, you know, you have some time to to think at night about what you're learning and what you're seeing and kind of where you are in your life. And I realized that um, I had seen this and I had personal experience with seeing this massive transformation. So um, my husband and I are celebrating 25 years of marriage this summer. Yay. And yeah, it's, it's exciting. It's crazy. It's uh, it goes fast. And also, it, you know, it's sometimes you're just going along so quickly in life. You don't realize how much you grow and change over the years. Um, but we realized like early on that we were good training partners. Like he and I, uh, early on in our marriage, we found a nice 5k route that we would run and it was just beautiful. Like, you know, it's just everything that we wanted, everything that we dreamed of. Um, it was a great, great experience, something we enjoyed doing together. Uh, we knew where the finish line was. We knew both knew how to get there. I mean, yeah, there'd be days where maybe I didn't want to finish because I was too tired, but he went on without me and it was fine. We were just happily plugging along. Um, but one day, you know, I realized that the route didn't really look like I remembered it. I'm going along and I'm like, where did this strip mall come from? I swear this was a park last week. And it just, the feelings were not the same. I just, I just felt like I had outgrown that route, but I didn't know how to ask my husband about it because we were a partnership. Um, as far as I knew, he really still enjoyed that route, but eventually we got to the point where, um, we started exploring new neighborhoods. And so you see the new parks and you see the new, um, you know, beauty in the landscape and it's going along and it's great. 
until you start like realizing that no matter where you start, you always end up on the same old route. And so I'm sitting and thinking and trying to figure out like, what are we going to do? I, I want to make a change, but I don't know how to do it. And I'm thinking, and I'm like, I don't even know if I like running anymore. I think what I want to do, I want to try mountain climbing, but I don't know how to mountain climb. I don't know what equipment's involved. And most importantly, like, I don't know what my husband thinks about mountain climbing. Like he didn't marry a mountain climber. What is he going to say if I bring this up? What if he has like some sort of like unknown um, judgment about people who mountain climb? Like, how is this going to rock the boat? Like, this is the most important person in my life. And I don't know what, what's going on here. And I had just reached the point where I wanted more connection and up level, and I didn't know how to get there. And maybe that's something that you can relate to, you know, whether you're in just broken up in a relationship or you're single longer than you expected, or you've just um, been together long enough that you want to show up as somebody else and you don't know um, what the next step is. And what we didn't know was that there was one part of us that wanted to change and another part of us that was kind of running in the background, keeping us small and safe. And the moment we began to address that background noise, we saw a massive shift. And I've seen it so many times since Virginia Beach. When you change your mindset, you change your life. And it can be tricky because how do you know to change something that you're not aware of? And that's where uh, all the training that we have gone through steps in. Um, now I am helping women massively shift their life and their relationships through subconscious reprogramming. And if you're following the story, it turns out my husband not only likes mountain climbing, but skydiving too. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to all the new mountain climbing and skydiving adventures for everyone. Oh my gosh. I love that, Krista. <laughs> yes. So it was just really cool to see like everything that we were learning in the training and realizing, yes, it really does work. And I've seen it and I've experienced it and I can help other people do that too. And by the end of that seven days, you are a coach and you already had a client. Yes, I did. I know it was, it was so wild that the trip that, that, that took me on, I, I remember calling my husband and being like, okay, I'm a coach now. He's like, what? So yeah, it was, it was just this, this, it, it just felt so right. Like it felt it, when um, the client approached me, it was like, yes, this is what I meant to do. This feels like a great next step. And it was just um, really starting in Virginia Beach through the whole experience. I just felt more alive and connected um, than I had in a really long time. And I think that's important. So there's plenty of people who we help who don't ever want to be a coach. And that's totally cool. It's the tools themselves for anyone who wants to come join us in August for habit training. These are tools, like you said, these are tools can be used with you, with your teenager, um, how you interact um, at the company you work at, how do you in interact with partners? And then what happens, what we see happen is that the people who really take these tools fast and they run with them, they implement them for themselves fast. They're, they're just, they want to share them. And that's when they become a coach. And a lot of us are just unofficial coaches all the time anyway, right? We're, we're coaching our kids. We're coaching the people around us. So we, Dr. Alex and, all, and I are all about just getting all the resources, all the resources we can so that who knows what's going to pop up, right? Lisa, 25 years in law. And now you're like, well, we're, we're going to do something different. We're going to, it's going to be mountain climbing. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Thank you so much, Krista. I love hearing your story. We super appreciate you sharing. And I know there's been, I'm positive there's some big takeaways here because I know that when everyone listens, they can step in and see like where in their life, where they're set, like this is the path we were on. And what if someone, the person I'm with doesn't want to be on a different path, right? We start to get it into our fear and realizing if we actually just speak the path uh, and speak about our experience, then there's a good chance we can come up with something even more exciting. Absolutely. And all the people that I met at the Virginia event were on a different journey and a different path. And we still found connection and support in sharing each other's stories. Um, yeah, we all have our own, our own goals and identities that we want to step into.
Awesome. Okay. So everyone listening, I don't know what date this will air, but if it is after or your early bird ends June 15th. So come on down and get your tickets. First 50 people are going to get a lunch voucher and we cannot wait to hang out with you for two days. So thanks for being here, Krista. Thank you. Hi, I just wanted to take a moment here to share my experience about an in-person event at Virginia Beach with Justy Ginger this past January. It was an amazing overall experience with sound healing, connecting with women from all walks of life, and the goodie bag that was actually packed with really good stuff. Um, I had many aha moments. But one of my biggest was how it was possible to work with your subconscious mind and remove the obstacles and blocks that's holding you back to really move forward and step into possibility, what's possible for you. And I was amazed at how the goals were just flowing out while we we're writing out goals. That was amazing. Weekend of connection, transformation, and so much more. Thank you, Justice Ginger. Thanks for coming out to hang with us on the podcast. It is our goal to transform the way women are treated in healthcare. And we need your help. We need your help to get the word out. We have a lofty goal of 1 million downloads. And we know that as this podcast grows, we're going to be able to reach more women, get more amazing speakers for you, and bring the most cutting edge information. If you found these podcasts helpful, please take a moment to text five women you know the link to the series. We appreciate your help so much. Can't wait to see you next time.